Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romney, and welcome back to this series. It's a sort of glossary or handbook of terms relevant to understanding narcissistic relationships or narcissism. A lot of these terms are thrown around on blogs and videos and all kinds of conversations about narcissism, narcissistic abuse in these relationships. However, I think it's important that everyone has a full understanding of them. Not only does it make it easier to understand the content, but many times by understanding these terms, it might actually give you more enlightenment and clarity on what's happening as well as maybe even giving you some very useful techniques. Today, the term we're going to take on is narcissistic injury. Now, before I get on to the world of the narcissistic injury, I'm always going to ask if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to this channel. You can do that just by hitting that bell and then you'll get ongoing notifications every time we post a new video. In this series, we're posting them every day, but at a minimum, we always post uh, content twice a week and have lives and all kinds of things. So let's start with then, let's talk about this term of narcissistic injury. So. Let's talk about what we mean by an injury in general. An injury is something that hurts us and harms us. We typically reserve this term for something more physical, like a, a bruise or a burn or a broken bone or a sprain, sort of physical injury. So that then begs the question, can injuries be psychological? And obviously they can. I mean, someone can hurt your feelings. An incident can hurt your pride. I don't know if you split your pants or you get a big red wine stain right on the front of a white dress. Just like a physical injury, a psychological injury also results in pain. It's psychological pain, but it's pain nonetheless. And interestingly, neuroimaging studies show that psychological pain looks like physical pain in our brains. Now, what about, though, when it's your ego that gets injured? That may happen when someone critiques or says something to you about something that's very significant to your sense of self, or it hits a particular vulnerability of yours. Now, we can all, any of, of us, can get our egos injured. I don't, let me think of a silly example. I'm, I'm a psychology professor, right? So I'm a psychology professor, and I be, might be having dinner with friends, and they have a high school student who's taking psychology, and they get a fact or a theory about psychology or a date right that I got wrong. It's not a big deal, but I've got to tell you, it'd probably make me feel a little bit icky and uncomfortable for a minute. I wouldn't have felt that same kind of ego injury if the issue had been a math problem or a question about physics or something like that. But I should know that. Change the subject matter, and whether it's you're a chef or a seamstress or a history teacher or whatever, you, you kind of get where I'm getting at. Now, the healthiest people out there might get a little bit defensive and then let it go and see that it's really not that big a deal, and I'll probably never forget that little psychology factoid. In fact, a little bit of Dr. Romani trivia, I fondly remember, very fondly remember, one of my first ego injuries. I happened to be a really good speller, really good speller in elementary school. In fact, I got the fourth grade spelling award, and I was so proud of myself. And I was on a fast track to win the spelling be. It was like the only thing I was good. I couldn't kick a ball. I couldn't do anything, but I could spell. And in the spelling bee, I spelled the word sincerely wrong. So help me, that was over 40 years ago. And I have never spelled the word sincerely wrong ever since. Every time I sign a letter, I'm like, oh. So it's those little things that stick it to us, but we move on. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even remember who won the spelling bee. It wasn't me. But we move on. So what makes an ego injury then into a full-blown narcissistic injury? The fact is those two terms, ego injury and narcissistic injury, can be somewhat synonymous. Narcissistic injuries are typically overreactions to perceived or small kinds of criticisms that injure the fragile ego of a person with a narcissistic personality style. Now, for example, narcissistic individuals really care about superficial characteristics, things like appearance and status and possessions and things that they own. 
So narcissistic injuries can often involve those kinds of superficial things. So I don't know, someone asking someone else like, oh, is your purse real? Or do you really like your car? I guess, I, I'm sure the Tesla is great. That's last year's car, isn't it? Or they might ask you, did, did you like your plastic surgeon? Which, whoops, that means you might have gotten plastic surgery. Or you might ask them, are you disappointed that your kid didn't get into Harvard or some other fancy schmancy kind of a thing? It may be on your part or someone else's part a very innocent question. Like, hey, I was wondering about that Tesla. That's last year's. Is it a good car? car? But it also may not be innocent. The fact is, though, their reaction highlights a vulnerability in a person who is narcissistic, who will often explode or get very sullen when that happens. And then you get to see the almighty narcissistic rage, which is another video in this series. They may yell, they may storm off, they may insult you directly, or they may insult you passive aggressively. They may get petulant and whiny and just sort of sullen. They might even say something kind of nasty and snarky like, yeah, I actually do like my plastic surgeon and it looks like you really would benefit from seeing him, but it might cost you a lot more. But it all goes beyond this kind of petty stuff. A narcissistic injury also may be something about which the narcissistic individual is really sensitive. And as a result, it's a core part of their insecurity. Now, whatever that thing is that they're sensitive about, it probably is going to seem really small to the rest of us. But to an insecure person, it can threaten to crumble their entire sense of self-worth. So for example, it may be something about their family background that they may feel ashamed of, or a skill deficit for which they really have to compensate for. Maybe they, they don't know how to pronounce certain words correctly or they have challenges with reading, something that they don't feel good about. Their core, the narcissist's core insecurity, results in a, almost like a kind of anxiety about certain things. And that anxiety can even be about their entire core sense of self. So now, as you know well, when that kind of, that sense of self gets activated, they mobilize all of those terrible defenses that they have, grandiosity, projection, entitlement, contempt, to protect their insecurity. So if you can, as an example, if you can view their core insecurity like a bone that has been broken in many, many places from a terrible accident or something, you could understand why these narcissistic injuries would hurt so badly and never quite completely heal. Narcissistic injuries also happen because people with narcissistic personality styles are often monitoring their environment for threats. And by threats, I don't mean like a tiger crouched in the corner. I mean anything, anything that's going to threaten their fragile sense of self. And that could be a, a critique or constructive feedback or a negative evaluation. Again, going back to that example of a bone being broken in lots of places, you would be very careful if you had that bone that had broken in 10 places, how you move that leg in case you hurt it again. So you would be looking around carefully to make sure the sidewalk ahead of you is flat, to make sure that there are no trip hazards because God forbid you tripped and aggravated that leg again. For a narcissistic individual, the world is a bunch of trip hazards, all of which make them very uncomfortable. There's lots of places for them to trip, fall, and painfully hurt their ego. Because they are always monitoring their environment, for threats, with the goal of protecting themselves. It's for that reason that they often zero in on that tiny little critique that may have been lurking in something you said. And it may have been that almost everything you said was great. And that little thing that they heard as a criticism was just a tiny passing comment to someone else that might have even seemed like a compliment. But for them, any kind of injury, any kind of threat, feels too destabilizing to them. So now you understand 
that a narcissistic injury is really a disproportionate reaction to an often very benign comment or a benign situation. So that begs the question, what does that mean for you if you have any form of relationship with them? It means a lot because narcissistic injuries almost invariably turn into narcissistic rage. Now, as an example, let's say that you're in a relationship with someone, I don't know, and you suggest a certain restaurant for dinner. And that restaurant you suggest, it's like, I don't know, fancy kind of a, a steak or special occasion restaurant, and it's relatively expensive. But in your particular relationship, you guys are accustomed to dining or eating at decent places. Your partner then gets really enraged at you for, for, for suggesting that restaurant. Who the hell do you think you are? I really think you must be some sort of gold digger. Are you on the make? Really? Do you expect me to wine you and dine you? Why don't you make yourself worthwhile and cook dinner for once? And then you sort of stare at your partner, completely shocked. In fact, the day before, they were the ones who said, could you make a reservation for dinner? Let's go out. It's the weekend. And all you did, as you had been doing for the past few months or maybe years in a relationship, was simply to suggest a restaurant that was on par with the places you usually eat. But now let's open the lens. In this story, let's say that that narcissist has not been forthcoming about some financial issues at work and that perhaps your partner wasn't forthcoming, that the sales totals didn't hit the way they needed, or that they didn't have the expected performance they were supposed to have, and that resulted in a bit of a dip in the amount of money that was coming in. Because narcissists are so terrible at communication, and they so have to protect their sort of superficial facade, you weren't privy to this information. You didn't know that there was less money coming in. And many of you right now who are in any kind of narcissistic relationships recognize how often that narcissist can be so secretive and controlling about money. One day you wake up and find out that you were living high on the hog, but you guys didn't really have money. Now, if money is their thing, and it often is the thing with narcissistic individuals, and you didn't know because they didn't share with you their issues, at work and with not making as much money, you made a suggestion that would have made sense. That would have made sense as little as a few weeks before, before they had this little dip at work. The injury in this case is that reminder, that restaurant reservation you made, about their loss of status, their loss of money, and perhaps a loss of power that happened to them. And you're a nice and easy target to take it out on. And that is often how a narcissistic injury often plays out. By the time you piece the whole thing together and figure it out, your narcissist has already probably experienced another injury because one often leads to another and they perceive more and more and more threat. But here's where it gets tricky. And this is where narcissistic injuries can really leave you in a chronic catch-22. Let's just say in that same situation, you suggested a sort of cheap and easy place for dinner in your neighborhood. Same thing. You don't know anything about the backstory. You're like, ah, let's just go to this place. It's nice and easy, nice and cheap. You make that suggestion, and you could just as easily have endured a, what the hell's wrong with you? I don't want to eat in a dump. Don't you think I can't afford a nice dinner out? And then once again, the same narcissistic injury around money and status. Now, they might say, oh, I wonder if they're onto the fact that I don't have as much money now, and they attack again. Narcissistic injuries become a way for understanding why the relationship with the narcissist is an eggshell walking catch-22. So what happens in these relationships over time? I mean, either you keep experiencing their rage which starts getting really uncomfortable, or one day in your relationship, you just stop talking. And that really doesn't feel like much of a relationship. Narcissistic injuries, though, can also explain a bit 
about why growing up with a narcissistic parent or a narcissistic or within a narcissistic family system is so difficult. Children are typically very fearful of their parents' anger. But with a narcissistic parent, the things, the factors that can result in an injury and set off a narcissistic parent can really feel mysterious, particularly to a child. And the child may not even be the cause of the narcissistic injury. It may involve other in, uh, issues in the narcissistic parent's life, like work or something like that. But the rage that the parent may manifest, the rage that they bring home, makes home a really precarious and unsafe place. As you transition into adulthood, your narcissistic parent will still continue to struggle with narcissistic injuries. It's just sort of a built-in with them. You will then learn that a late birthday card or missing a family dinner or family event will be enough to result in your parent tantruming and spinning out of control. Once again, we're back to eggshells. Now, in the workplace, narcissistic injuries again, uh, Narcissistic injuries can make people very careful in how they interact with the resident workplace narcissist because nobody wants to injure them because nobody wants to deal with the drama. This can often mean that lots of time can get wasted in meetings trying to find a way to say something in a way that the narcissist won't blow up about or turn into a big dramatic showdown that wastes everyone's time. You literally feel like you're breaking a sweat trying to say it just right in the meeting. The fear of committing a narcissistic injury in the workplace is often how narcissists get enabled. Everyone is so afraid of pissing them off and then having to deal with the fallout that things don't get said, important issues that are critical for the workplace don't get communicated, and most importantly, other people may need to carry more of the load because of the fear of injuring the fragile narcissist. And this not only results in more of a burden on everyone in the workplace, especially the people who are healthy, it also results in a greater likelihood of much bigger problems down the road for that particular workplace because perhaps things weren't head on, addressed head on in that place where you work or that business. And down the road, those things will blow up because everyone was so afraid of injuring or dealing with the aggravation of the narcissist in the first place. It creates workplaces where you are afraid of saying something that may not be feasible. You can't do the grandiose idea the narcissist has or even something that's not a good idea. And this kind of energy even censors people from making suggestions because they don't want to set off the narcissist who may also feel injured because they believe that you are trying to compete with them. It can waste time, this can waste money, and it can also bring down companies, businesses, and institutions, or all but guarantee that the good people will leave. So is there anything we could do about these narcissistic injuries? Not really. On the rare occasions when your narcissist gets into therapy and consistently goes to therapy, then it's remotely possible that they may do some exploration of the core issues that make these injuries so in inflammatory for them. But that's pretty rare, and you aren't their therapist. So for you, dealing with their narcissistic injuries always circles back to the realistic expectations and the radical acceptance. This is who they are. 
This is what they are fragile about. And if you choose to interact, engage, or continue to have some form of relationship with this person, and if you tread on their fragility, there will be blowback. So your options become to either not care about their rage, like grow indifferent to it, and that's not always easy, or to keep trying to avoid the risk of creating a narcissistic injury by not talking about or treading or on or mentioning anything that may set them off. But think back to that restaurant example I gave you. It's often a catch-22, and you don't know what will set them off. The restaurant's too expensive. The restaurant's too cheap. You just don't know. And because of your own family of origin issues or trauma issues or other historical issues, many people, many of you are afraid of rage, especially that blindingly overwhelming narcissistic rage. So the idea of not letting their rage bother you does not always work for everyone. Ultimately, if you are able to endure their rage, and in some cases endure their vindictiveness, then you may be able to weather their narcissistic, narcissistic injuries and narcissistic injury tantrums merely as the annoyance that they are. And once you get to that point, you really are in a much better position to stay sane in these relationships. So there's a question, how long does it take a narcissistic injury to heal? Well, it depends. In some cases, narcissistic rage is a bit of a tension reliever for the narcissist. So, as, and I'll talk about this in the narcissistic rage video, so after they have their explosive tantrum, they relieve that tension, they tend to pop back. They may still be angry at whoever triggered them, but remember, narcissists don't always burn bridges because they need all the narcissistic supply. But then, because they have so little awareness of the harm and the discomfort they created for others by their rage, they will actually do nothing. And in some cases, they just sit and pout like petulant little children for a long time about their narcissistic injury. Narcissistic injuries often result in narcissists playing upon their tried and true script of being a victim. In some cases, when some new validation comes along or something comes up to prop up their ego, then they'll dust off and move forward until the next narcissistic injury happens, and it'll probably happen in a matter of hours. Now, the narcissistic injury is, in fact, the trigger for narcissistic rage. The disproportionateness of these reactions and their seem, the seeming sort of mysterious quality of these narcissistic injuries can be confusing and unsettling. These narcissistic injuries and our fear of setting these injuries off are really the big driver of the eggshell walking dynamic of the narcissistic relationship. The term narcissistic injury is thrown around all the time. And I think many of you know it to be what it is. It's anything that sort of pings the narcissist's insecurity. The catch-22 issue that you're never quite sure what's going to set them off leaves you feeling like this relationship is, is, a, is a very, very precarious situation where you don't know when they're going to blow. That can really make a relationship like this exhausting and very, very bad for your health. It's really, really hard to have a relationship with someone when you don't know that a very, very innocuous word from your part could break the fragile, spun sugar interior of the narcissist that seems to crack just when the wind blows the wrong way. I hope this video clarifies your understanding of what a narcissistic injury is and the toll it takes on you if you're in a relationship like this. If you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to this channel. All you need to do is just hit that little bell and you'll be a subscriber and get notifications on videos like this, not only just this whole series, but everything else that we put out. And you'll be able to see all the other videos on narcissism, narcissistic relationships, and narcissistic abuse. So I hope you've learned something here, and thanks again so much for tuning in.